Hello everybody, welcome back to Book of Kings, where we discuss topics such as history, religion, philosophy, psychology, culture, and more, and the way that they all interact with one another. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Hope you enjoy. The topic of the Eurasian Steppe has been a frequent theme on this channel, and to those familiar with the Eurasian Steppe, one name that likely comes to mind is that of the Tsiongnu. The Tsiongnu were a nomadic tribal confederation of the Eastern Eurasian Steppe, and arguably the first major one at that, acting as a frequent rival to the Han Dynasty of China. The immense impact that the Tsiongnu had on the history of the Eurasian Steppe has led many to draw connections between them and other steppe peoples, and has sparked debate regarding their ethno-linguistic origins and identity. Cultural and ethno-linguistic groups commonly associated with the Tsiongnu include the Huns, Iranic peoples, Turks, Mongolic, and Yenisei-speaking peoples. So with today's video, we will examine the arguments for the identification of the Tsiongnu with each of these ethno-linguistic groups. So without further ado, Let's begin. We will begin our discussion with the proposed connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns of Europe. The topic of whether the Huns of Europe originated from the Tsiongnu of the Eastern Eurasian Steppe is one that has been hotly debated. While many subscribe to this theory, it has not yet become the consensus among scholars. Genetic research is cited to draw a connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns, with recent research showing that the Huns had a significant amount of Tsiongnu DNA. However, this connection has been disputed by other researchers, stating that the small sample size has made it difficult to draw a connection between the two nations. Of the many arguments in favor of the connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns, the primary piece of evidence cited is the similarity between the names of the Tsiongnu and groups related to the Huns. Steppe peoples of medieval Central Asia, such as the Kitarites, Heftalites, Alchon and Nezak are often known collectively as Shionites, derived from the Middle Persian name spelled X-Y-O-N, likely pronounced something along the lines of Chion. The people referred to as Chion in Middle Persian also had a significant presence in the Indian subcontinent where they are referred to as the Huna, and they are referred to as the Hun in the Syriac language. This naturally conjures up thoughts of similarities with the name of the European Huns. In fact, the Heftalites of Central Asia are often referred to by the title of White Huns. And while many scholars are of the opinion that there was no direct connection between the Huns of Europe and the Shianite peoples such as the Heftalites, let alone the Tsiongnu, historians such as Etienne de la Vaisière hypothesize that the Heftalites were part of Hunnic migrations of the 4th century from the Altai regions of the Eastern Steppe, which eventually reached Europe, and stated that they were the quote-unquote political and cultural heirs of the Tsiongnu. Further, he points to the script of the ancient Sogdian language, which refers to both the Tsiongnu and the Huns as XWN, possibly pronounced something along the lines of Hun. In fact, the connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns was first proposed in 1758 by French historian Joseph de Guigné. Guigné made reference to the fact that Sogdian sources describe the Huin people pillaging the Chinese city of Luoyang, with Chinese sources referring to this same event as being perpetrated by the Tsiongnu, giving support to the argument in favor of a connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns. However, it should be noted that Guigné did not attempt to prove any ethno-linguistic cultural connection between the Tsiongnu and the Huns, but rather the connection he proposed was more of political identity. However, as it is proposed that the hypothesized connection between the Tsiongnu and Huns may have been based upon political identity, but not necessarily cultural or ethnic identity, even if we were to draw a connection between the two nations, this may still leave the question of their ethno-cultural linguistic origins open for debate. Further, some scholars have suggested that the language of the Huns is unidentifiable, or that the Huns were a multi-ethnic nation with various languages spoken. This brings us to our next contender for ethno-linguistic connections of the Tsiongnu, and that is to the Mongolic-speaking peoples. Being that the Tsiongnu Empire resided primarily in modern-day Mongolia, 
it may seem natural that a connection between the Tsiongnu and the Mongolic-speaking peoples would be drawn, with some scholars suggesting that the Tsiongnu may have spoke a language related to Mongolian, and that the Tsiongnu may have been ancestors of the Mongols. Japanese scholar Shiratori Kurakichi expressed agreement with this position, but additionally proposed that the Tsiongnu were mixed with speakers of Tungustic languages. For more information on the Mongolic and Tungustic languages, check out my video series on the language families of the world. Now moving on to the next contender on the list of potential ethno-linguistic backgrounds for the Tsiongnu, we will now discuss the Iranian or Iranic-speaking peoples. So just to provide a little bit of context, when we refer to Iranian or Iranic-speaking peoples, we are not just referring to the people and languages of Iran, but to the languages and speakers of languages of the Iranian group of the Indo-Iranian branch of the Indo-European language family. This would include not just the majority of the languages of modern-day Iran, but also languages spoken presently and historically in the Iranian plateau, as well as Central Asia and the Eurasian steppe, including languages of steppe peoples such as the Scythians. So back to our discussion on the Tsiongnu. Scholars such as Harold Walter Bailey had proposed that the Tsiongnu were of Iranic origin, noting that all of the early Tsiongnu names from the 2nd century BC were Iranic names. Further, in a 1994 UNESCO publication, Hungarian linguist Janos Harmata proposed that the Tsiongnu royal tribes and kings possessed Iranic names, and that all Tsiongnu words documented by the Chinese can be explained being from an East Iranian Scythian language, and that from this it can be concluded that the Tsiongnu spoke an Eastern Iranian language. Additionally, Central Asian scholar Chris Beckwith has noted that the current written Chinese form of the name now pronounced as Tsiongnu may have been pronounced in a manner similar to the names of the ancient Iranic-speaking peoples of Central Asia, the Scythians, Saka, and or Sogdians. However, he has stated that the Tsiongnu may have contained an Iranic component when they first began, but more likely had previously been subjects of an Iranic-speaking people whom they learned the nomadic model they practiced from. Per a 2020 study by Cambridge University, despite hypothesizing that the majority of the Tsiongnu population likely spoke a Turkic language, it has been noted that the Tsiongnu genomes contain 1-25% to Iranic ancestry. This leads us to the next ethno-linguistic group in our discussion, and that is the Turkic peoples. Many scholars, including the previously mentioned 2020 study by Cambridge University, proposed that the majority of the Tsiongnu population was believed to have spoken a Turkic language, which this study describes as being the most commonly held view. Chinese sources link the Tiele, a Turkic tribal confederation which emerged after the fall of the Tsiongnu, to the Tsiongnu. Additionally, Chinese historical sources such as the Book of Zhou and the histories of the Northern Dynasties describe the Ashina clan, which would later go on to found the Gokturk Khanate as being a component of the Tsiongnu Confederacy. It has been proposed that the Jie people from the western portion of Tsiongnu's territory spoke a Turkic language. This is based on the observation that a 7th century Chinese book, now known as the Jin Shi, contained a Jie song, which most readings identify as being written in an early Turkic language. This provided support to the possibility of the Tsiongnu Confederacy being presided over by a Turkic ruling class. According to an analysis by A. V. Debo, the historically documented written vocabulary of the Tsiongnu has been shown to be of partly East Iranian origin and partly of Turkic origin. She did note, however, that the words of East Iranian origin were found only in early sources, almost all of which were either titles or terms for dairy products while Turkic words were found in both early and later sources and across various different areas of their vocabulary. This can be argued to hint at an initial East Iranian ruling elite with the Turkic-speaking majority or plurality, possibly corroborating Chris Beckwith's hypothesis which we previously discussed. Additionally, Genetic research from 2003 on the remains of 62 individuals buried in a Tsiongnu gravesite in Mongolia between the 3rd century BC and the 2nd century AD found DNA patterns similar to those of many modern Turkic peoples, providing further support to the hypothesis that the Tsiongnu may have been of at least partially Turkic origin. 
It has been suggested by some scholars, such as Edwin Pulleyblank, that the Tsiongnu spoke a Yeniseian language. Yeniseian is a small language family comprising languages found around the Siberia region of modern-day Russia. It has been proposed that the Jie people, which we previously mentioned, spoke a Yeniseian language as opposed to a Turkic language. This is based on the hypothesis that the song which we discussed earlier was composed in a Yeniseian language. This has led some researchers to argue that a Yeniseian Jie minority ruled over other peoples within the Tsiongnu Confederacy, such as Turkic and Iranic peoples. Such scholars have suggested that Tsiongnu titles, which were later borrowed by Turkic and Mongolic peoples, such as Tegin and Targan, are actually of Yeniseian origin. However, the association of the Jie people with the Yeniseian language family is highly disputed. Other scholars have proposed that the Tsiongnu initially spoke a Yeniseian language, but later experienced a shift in language from Yeniseian to Turkic. With evidence potentially pointing to a variety of ethnic origins for the Tsiongnu, many scholars have proposed that the Tsiongnu were a multi-ethnic confederation comprising multiple ethno-linguistic groups and that its dominant language has not been definitively proven. In fact, the Chinese historical texts, the Book of Sui and the Tong Dian, describe the Tsiongnu as being quote-unquote mixed nomads. Russian anthropologist Nikolai Kradin described the Tsiongnu state as being a multi-ethnic confederacy, while Hyun Kim described the Tsiongnu as being a multilingual, multi-ethnic empire. Genetic evidence from skeletons in a Tsiongnu cemetery in Mongolia indicate the presence of individuals potentially of Scythian origin, which researchers suggest indicates a multi-ethnic makeup of the Tsiongnu empire. Additionally, genetic research has found a mixture of East Eurasian and West Eurasian haplogroups, suggesting significant genetic diversity within the Tsiongnu Confederacy and multiple potential origins of Tsiongnu elites. And finally, this brings us to our final hypothesis on the ethno-cultural linguistic connections of the Tsiongnu, and that is no connection. Turkologist Gerhard Dorfer has rejected the possibility of a connection between the Tsiongnu language and any other known language, strongly rejecting a connection with Turkic or Mongolic languages. But what do you think? Were the Tsiongnu the ancestors of the Huns, or is this a loose connection at best? Were the Tsiongnu, and by proxy the Huns, if we do believe that the two people were connected, of Mongolic background? Were they East Iranian? Were they Turkic? Yeniseian? Were they a multi-ethnic confederacy which included many or all of these different ethno-linguistic groups? Or were they entirely unrelated to any known group? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching. This has been another Book of Kings video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video.